finished reading The Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. This is the 60th anniversary edition. It's a slim little uh, sci-fi novel, just uh, about 200 pages. And it's a classic alien invasion story. Um, we're in a small little town called Mill Valley, California. And some people are reporting that their loved ones look the same or acting the same, but they know they're an imposter. There's something different about them. And it's first brought to the attention of our main character, our narrator of the story, Dr. Miles Bennell, by a former girlfriend of his, Becky Driscoll. And she says that her cousin is first experiencing this. They think maybe she's kind of, you know, maybe losing her mind a little bit. And then one after another, we get more uh, residents kind of saying the same things about their own loved ones. Um, is this a mass psychosis thing going on? Um, but then there are some evidence that there is something else, uh, which I don't want to go into details for spoiler reasons, but we come to learn that there is an invasion taking place, and we're following our main characters and the situation they find themselves in. Who's going to believe their story? Um, what can they do about it? Is it confined just to their, their small little town? Is it reaching further out? And I found it kind of a slow-paced sci-fi novel, but it still held my interest throughout, and I was kind of wondering, what are these characters going to do? How are they going to solve this situation? The overall ending was fairly satisfactory, a little ambiguous on one aspect of it, but overall I did enjoy the story, and I think it might come across more interestingly as a movie. It's been some time since I saw the version with Donald Sutherland in it, so I'm going to try and track that one down and check it out. But overall I enjoyed it, and I gave it three stars. I also just finished an audio book that was the last book in the Chronicles of Narnia series, entitled The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. Um... This one, it was it was pretty good. Uh, I, I tend to like the the books that had like Peter and his brothers and sisters in it the most. I, I, I like those characters. Those are the ones I was first introduced to through the movies, and then once I read um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But um, I still overall enjoyed most of the books, I'd say. A Horse and His Boy was probably my least favorite out of the entire series. With regards to this one, we have sort of an epic battle of good versus evil. Um, there's someone impersonating Aslan, uh, or using someone to impersonate Aslan for their own gain, and <laughs> this Skippy's barking at me from over there, if you heard that. One of my favorite parts of the book was that there was a lot of characters that did return in this, so we kind of got to find out what their story was after they left Narnia. Um, but there was one aspect of that, one character's story I... I felt kind of depressed about it, wasn't happy about it. I didn't see the need for that character's story to be the way it was. Uh, so that was a bit of a disappointment. But overall, it was a pretty interesting story, um, good battle at the end, and uh, a little different twist than I expected it to end. But overall, I enjoyed it, and I gave it four stars. Just finished reading Dragon Teeth by Michael Crichton. Um, this is a book set in the American Wild West in the year 1876, and it's set during the height of the Indian Wars, just the gold rush total lawlessness in many of the territories. And the book is kind of peppered with actual historical people, including Wyatt Earp and his brother. Uh, but most importantly, it's focused around two paleontologists of that era. Uh, one of them is Athaniel Charles Marsh. He's from Yale. And then we also have Edward Drinker Cope uh, from Philadelphia. These were two extreme rivals of each other. They did everything underhanded to try and financially and socially ruin each other's reputations. And instead, they pretty much did it to themselves. Uh, but during the course of their rivalry, they also did make several uh, major discoveries, one of which you kind of learn within the pages of this book. Um, the book is sort of centered around a fictional character by the name of William Johnson, a Yale student who kind of a, comes from a privileged background and uh, sort of a wager. He says that he could survive out in the West uh, during the summer, and he kind of finagles his way onto uh, Marsh's expedition. And uh, through the course of events... Uh, we see the growth of this character from this privileged kind of uh, youth into a sort of an unlikely hero. And it was overall entertaining, it gave that western kind of feel, which brought back the days of when I used to watch John Wayne movies and The Lone Ranger. I've never really picked up a western novel and read it, but it, it, um, it kind of brought back that era for me. And the paleontology aspect of it as well, and the rivalry between the two um, paleontologists, uh, I found rather intriguing, and I kind of Wikipedia to find out a little bit more about their background and things they kind of got up to. Uh, but overall, I did find it very entertaining. Uh, it's a fairly quick read, uh, kind of a guilty pleasure type read, I think, and for fans of Jurassic Park, I think you'll get something out of this. 
Overall, I gave it three stars, but it's probably more around like three and a half for me. This is The Dead House by Don Kurtigich. It's a YA horror book. Um, I read it in 2015, and it made my top ten list for that year. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's got a really interesting format to it, told through um, diary entries and video transcripts and post-its and all sorts of things. I did a full review on it, which I'll link down below. I just finished listening to the audiobook, and it absolutely blew my mind. It was one of the best audios I have ever listened to. It's narrated by uh, Charlotte Perry and Christian Coulson, and they did an excellent job uh, portraying all the various characters and the accents, and there's some creepy music going on, and I just got so immersed in it, just like I did when I read the book. Highly recommend it if you're in audiobooks, or if you just want a really good story. You can't go wrong either way you pick this book up. Um, definitely recommend it uh, to everybody. Five stars all the way. I just finished listening to A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. This is narrated by Neil Hunt, and this is a book that was written kind of around the 1950s. It's the tale of a young woman by the name of Jean Paget. She's a young English woman who comes to learn of an inheritance uh, from an uncle she never really knew. The story is narrated by her uncle's solicitor, who meets with Jean and describes the nature of the trust in which she will inherit the money when she reaches 35. She's still many years away from that. Her uncle seemed to think that women of that time could not handle or didn't have a head for finances. Um, so the money will be held in trust for her, but she will receive a certain amount of money per year until that point when she inherits the full bulk of the estate. Uh, she does describe a wish that she would like to return to the jungles of Malaya and build a well for a village there, and he questions the reason behind this. And this is where the main part of the story kind of unfolds as Jean describes the um, events that took place during World War II when she was a prisoner of war of the Japanese. Um, she, along with some 80 um, English uh, women and children, were captured and there weren't really facilities for uh, women prisoners and the Japanese sort of put them on a death march for seven, um, I think it was 17 months uh, where they their numbers pretty much dwindled down to like 30 uh, by the time they ended up at this village which uh, is where they found their salvation and this is the reason she sort of wants to give back to the community and uh, that's a major portion of the story uh, it is a tale of war but also there is uh, love and hope uh, within the story and from the jungles of Malaya we end up traveling with her to Australia where the rest of the book sort of takes place and this is where there's quite a large portion of the story that I kind of wanted to kind of wrap up a little sooner. I felt the book kind of dragged on a bit at that point. Um, we do see the ingenuity of this young woman and her sense of um, kind of what's needed in this sort of small little outback town and uh, kind of building a future and building up this town as well until it's almost a town like Alice, in this case Alice Springs. And uh, some of it was interesting, like I said, and I did enjoy a certain aspect of the story and how that kind of played out, but I felt that the end just kind of dragged on a bit. It's just like, you know, she's going through one business after another, and um, yeah, it just, it just needed to wrap up a little sooner for me. Overall, I gave it three stars. I just finished reading Explorer's Guild, uh, Volume 1, A Passage of Shambhala by John Baird and Kevin Costner. Uh, this is sort of an epic adventure along the lines of Indiana Jones, and, but written more along the lines of a Richard Kipling book, like A Man Who Would Be King, and that kind of setting and style of writing. Although when I say setting, uh, this is kind of a global adventure. You start out in the Canadian Arctic, you travel deep within the Himalayas, into South America, into New York City, and Baghdad, all over. Uh, and our, our characters can travel via horseback and submarine and ship and airship also. Apologize for the plane noise. Um, and this book is just absolutely fascinating. I love the way it's put together. It has um, some really beautiful end papers with like, maps on it. It's got an antique look to it. The quality of the pages are kind of a sepia tone. There's a mixture of uh, graphic novel style panels, full page text, uh, and also some beautiful full page illustrations to tell the story. And it's about the Explorers Guild, and a member of that guild is Arthur Ogden. And he's trying to find the passage to uh, the Northwest Passage. And while he's doing that, he sees these strange lights and ends up falling through the ice and supposedly uh, being exposed to the mythical city of Shambhala. Now, it is said that those that are worthy are called to the city, and those who stumble upon it are uh, either driven mad or, or 
their health deteriorates rapidly, and that's sort of what's happened to um, Arthur. Uh, he did manage to pull some kind of strange object up from the ice with him, uh, but his mind is kind of unclear as to what he saw, and his health is deteriorating rapidly. Uh, his sister writes to their brother, Major John Ogden, which is this gentleman here. He's fighting in the Anglo-Indian Wars, and she requests that he comes back um, to see their brother. And en route, there are several people, like a list of people that he needs to collect, kind of, that have very similar symptoms to his brother Arthur. And they're hoping, um, this Major Sloan, who's looking after his brother Arthur, hopes that by studying them, they'll help, kind of help cure Arthur. Uh, and this adventure, like I said, spans the globe as they're trying to track down these various people. One young boy seems to be uh, very pivotal um, through the most of the story. He's one of these kids that had like a similar symptom. Um, I just found it an epic, epic adventure. I loved all the characters. They're all so well-rounded. Most of the dialogue that you get is within the pages of the graphic novel, and then the text part are sort of descriptions and uh, explanations of what's going on told to you from the point of view of a narrator who is writing as if he's writing to you, the gentle reader, as he begins um, the book, and describes like the first thing about how sometimes if you're in a city and you see this sort of archway of door, um, it would lead you to the Explorer's Guild. Uh, like I said, it was just a fascinating story. I, I just I couldn't wait to get back to the graphic novel pages because I just love the artwork and the characters are, are so well developed, even though some of them in terms of the soldiers working for Major John Ogden, are a bit stereotypical, like burly Irishmen and uh, kind of the handsome, carefree, uh, slightly alcoholic soldier. Uh, but also they're all very loyal to him, and uh, even though they sort of are deserting their posts to follow him on this adventure, uh, I just love the way that all the characters were so well developed, and the story just was absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for the next volume to come out. I heard this one took about four years in the making, so I'm hoping the next one will not take as long. Uh, but I highly recommend this one. I gave it five stars. So I just finished the third omnibus of Blood Lad. This is by Yuki Kodama. Uh, of course, it's two volumes in one, and I won't go into a whole lot of detail of it. I gave it five stars overall because I'm really enjoying this series, kind of a vampire story. Um, this guy is Staz. He ends up trying to save the life of this human girl who's fallen into the demon world and died. He's trying to <laughs> kind of resurrect her. Um, on the cover here is Daz's sister Liz. We meet a lot of new characters in this particular volume. Um, with really interesting characters. I love the artwork overall. Uh, this particular volume gave us a lot of background history of the various families of the characters and I really enjoyed that one a lot. So I highly recommend this series. Um, moving on to the next volume right away. The last away. book I read this month was The Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham. It's a slim little sci-fi book about an alien invasion of a small town of Midwich. A silver object kind of falls within the town, and for about a 24-hour period, everyone within that area of the town are knocked unconscious. When the object disappears later on, um, everyone wakes up, none the worse for wear, except all the women um, in the village that are of childbearing age are now pregnant. And the book is it's kind of slow paced, I'd say. It spends a lot of um, a lot of the time kind of doing philosophical discussions amongst the villagers about the children and their rights. Um, they're kind of frightening children. Their appearance is very rather odd, and their abilities are what's the most frightening. Uh, they're far superior in their abilities than humans, and it's sort of debating uh, how to handle them and. and what threat they are to the humans. It was a very interesting plot. I say most of his books have very interesting plots, but in some, t some cases, some of it's a little slow going. But overall, I did enjoy it, and I gave it three stars. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I thought I'd do something a little bit different for a wrap-up. Uh, I think I've done all of the uh, discussions for this month outside, so total outdoor vlog. So let me know what you guys thought of it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.